Yeah. Oh. yeah. Please, yeah, yeah. start and teach yeah. yourself. So if you don't mind, I rather stay sick because I'm nervous and maybe my legs are shaking too much. Uh, but uh, yeah, my name is Judith Jakob and uh, I am a psychiatrist at, uh, mainly at uh, the Hungarian National Institute of Psychiatry and Addictions. And uh, I also uh, study psychotherapy and uh, I'm working here at Megalo for two years, almost two years now. So uh, I'm very sorry that we uh, are unable to visit uh, our institution due to these precautions, but uh, because I, I really would like to show you um, our working place and the uh, roots of our patients from the very beginning. Uh, but for now, I would like to uh, share with you a few thoughts about uh, a very specific group of clients, our clients, uh, who's called dual diagnosis clients. My colleague uh, also uh, spoke about them. Maybe I can add some more details about this topic. So, uh, these terms, uh, dual diagnosis, comorbidity or comorbid disorders are interchangeable terms. They are uh, used, uh, these terms, to describe the co-occurrence of uh, substance use disorder, SUD, and another mental health disorder or severe uh, mental illness uh, in the same time, in the same individual. Uh, the mental health disorder could be psychosis, uh, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, personality disorder, for example. Uh, the lifetime prevalences uh, are different according to the layout of the researches and according to the examined countries, but most of the studies uh, suggest that about half of uh, the substance users having uh, both the substance use and the mental health disorder. Yeah. I uh, think the relevance is comorbidity is related not only uh, to its high prevalence, but uh, also to its difficult management and uh, its association with poor outcomes for those affected. In comparison with uh, the patients with a single disorder, this group shows a higher psychopathological severity and increased risk of uh, risky behavior, unemployment, homelessness, uh, and also criminal behavior. Uh, I think uh, it's a kind of evidence that patients with schizophrenia and combined uh, comorbid SUD are younger, mostly male, uh, less educated, uh, they have shorter duration of illness and uh, they have more police contact than uh, those with the single diagnosis of schizophrenia. Uh, there is also a very ch challenging group of clients. Uh, they are one, the ones with SUD and personality disorder plus uh, another mental health disorder. Uh, they uh, means a very big burden to to the healthcare system. Um, I think um, they are the hardest to treat because uh, sometimes, usually, they uh, they are very impulsive. They show often aggressive behavior during uh, uh, taking care of them. They are instability. They have emotional instability also. Uh, at the end, I would like to present a case study from this uh, category of patients. Mm. Yeah, uh, I think the relationship between the <coughs> substance use and mental health disorders is very complex and uh, difficult to establish a clear pathway between the two. Uh, a substance use disorder could trigger a the development of a psychiatric <coughs> disorder and also a psychiatric disorder could be a risk factor of uh, drug use and the development of a comorbid disorder. Uh, here, uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, you can see some reasons which, uh, which uh, could be behind this comorbidity, for example, uh, oh sorry, I did something which I don't want to do. Sorry. 
Yeah. So um, these clients have heightened sensitivity to the effects of psychoactive substances uh, due to their bad environment. They are more likely to encounter drugs. Uh, also, you may heard about, you are familiar with the hypothesis of self-medication or self-medications of side effects of the regular medication which we gave to these patients. Uh, sometimes for these uh, patients uh, to use a drug, to abuse a drug is uh, kind of gaining access to a social group, comparing exclusion from conventional society. Uh, drug use can, really, can be a relief from boredom, inactivity, social anxiety, and stuff like that. Mm, I think uh, that uh, in daily practice, our main question is uh, not that which was first uh, SUD or psychiatric disorder and not that which are the concrete reasons behind comorbidity, but how can we treat well these people whose numbers are increasing in every year, I think, maybe in your country too. Uh, so uh, I listed some um, some points why I think this whole topic is important. Most of them I've already mentioned. Uh, I would like to say a few words about the, one of the most examined substances, which is cannabis, uh, because uh, in Hungary this is uh, the most commonly abused illegal substance, I think in other countries as well, by adolescents and young adults. And it is also known that this is the most frequently abused drug among people with schizophrenia or other uh, psychotic disorders. Uh, many research has proved uh, since the year 2000, I guess, uh, that uh, there is a relationship between uh, the regular use of cannabis and schizophrenia. Uh, mostly daily use of cannabis is a very strong risk factor uh, in the development of schizophrenic process with a proved and uh, very complex genetic background. You know. Yeah, uh, mm. dual diagnosis uh, has very specific uh, negative outcomes. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, there are also strong links uh, between SUD and unemployment, homelessness, as I mentioned before, higher risk of violence, self-harm, suicide, uh, of course, and uh, it has a possibly poorer prognosis. Uh, the relapses, rehospitalizations, and the medication non compliances are very, very common in this uh, specific group, which, uh, which causes a very big burden to the healthcare system. So, uh, according to all of this, uh, dual diagnosis is uh, a chronic and relapsing disorder, uh, which results in uh, higher cost of treatment, of course and more use of uh, ER and uh, acute uh, psychiatric uh, services as well. Mm. About treatment, uh, there are, you may know, some guidelines and uh, recommendations about how to treat ideal idealistic uh, this uh, group of patients, but um, I think uh, that time there is no per perfect uh, treatment strategy for these clients. Uh, one of the mm, most examined feel that integrated treatment model is uh, the one which we recommended to choose instead of sequential or parallel um, models. Mm, one of the basic rules is uh, that the two disorders uh, should be addressed simultaneously and with a multidisciplinary approach, of course, involving drug and mental health professionals working together uh, towards, of course, this common goal. And the way is, I think, always long. Uh, professionals uh, need to be very full of patience and uh, we need to have a, a complex view and uh, a lot of hard education, I think. Um, 
some of I would like to highlight some of the listed points uh, which are important. I think, for example, case management, uh, cycle education. I think from the very very beginning, this is one of the most important thing to speak about. Uh, drug problems uh, very directly with these people. I think uh, it's essential to involve family uh, or if family doesn't exist then friends, uh, teachers and stuff like that. Also pharma pharmacotherapy is a very important part. As a psychiatrist I know that uh, a good, um, good psych uh, pharmacotherapy um, means a lot <coughs> and also stable housing this is a very important thing uh, due to these problems so <coughs> these are the ideal things but uh, I think uh, there are many difficulties in practice in Hungary I think there are many difficulties one of the main problems here is that in rea reality the mental health and substance misuse treatments are traditionally have different philosophies about responsibility, uh, responsibility of the client for their own condition. Uh, the commonly used confrontational approach, for instance, and low tolerance of relapses are uh, may not be appropriate for this specific group. Uh, yeah. Dual diagnosis uh, patients who has uh, problems relating to initial diagnosis, focus interventions, and general management issues as well. Uh, in my own practice, uh, I think uh, the one the problems, the main problems which we face <laughs> almost every day. Uh, is the sending patients back and forth between the services uh, which leads to the dropouts of course there are also many undiagnosed or misdiagnosed uh, clients uh, because of um, the lack of expertise on that field of course uh, the identification is uh, very problematic because the acute or chronic effects of substance abuse can mimic uh, uh, the symptoms of many other mental health disorders. Uh, and I think um, I would like to say a few words about uh, uh, one other very emerging problems in our daily routine, uh, which uh, sometimes leads to burnout uh, uh, at the end. So in the daily life of a psychiatrist, we have a lack of uh, feeling of success with these uh, clients. It's very um, overwhelming and disappointing when uh, we meet the same client in <laughs> almost the same conditions. Uh, month by month uh, during the night shift and oh my god, I, uh, <coughs> I uh, treated him or her for <laughs> two months and she was well and oh, oh, yeah, and again, <laughs> psychosis and again, the same thing. So I think uh, it's a very big problem in reality. Mm, yeah, but <laughs> um, despite of all these things, I have good news too, uh, because um, in our institute, uh, we cannot offer, of course, this integrated uh, treatment model, but uh, we communicate a lot. Uh, we have a very lucky situation because uh, we have a department of psychiatry and we have a department of addictology. The addictologists are also psychiatrists, so they are expertise of uh, both these fields and uh, we have a really good relationship. Uh, most of, in most of the cases, we started the treatment at the acute phase, and after uh, stabilization, we can um, we can um, communicate with the addictologist and uh, send them there to rehabilitation. Yeah, uh, so I'm I'm not that disappointed <laughs> at that point. 
Um, before my case report, uh, I would like to show you only a list of the most common substances in Hungarian practice uh, uh, due to statistics. Um, I put uh, alcohol also into this uh, list, uh, but I think the most common is, uh, of course, cannabis, and it followed by uh, uh, cytostimulants and uh, the so-called designer drugs, which are, um, I think you you, will, uh, you are going to hear about it today, uh, yeah, in another uh, presentation. But uh, they are uh, an increasing. There is an increased number of these uh, cases too. So these are the uh, sources which I used to my uh, presentation. And now, uh, if you are not that tired, and I am not that tired, then uh, I would like to uh, present uh, a twenty-year-old woman. Um, Let's call her Kate, uh, who was uh, admitted against uh, her will to the hospital a few months ago. Uh, her mother brought her in because uh, she had been acting very strange uh, lately. Uh, for example, she ruined the furniture of her apartment, uh, didn't pay the rent, but called the landlord several times and uh, spoke about weird ideas about possible reconstruction. And uh, the final straw was when uh, she started uh, painting the stairways uh, during midnight and uh, telling the neighbors that she wanted to renovate the whole building immediately. Um, she, at that time, yeah. <laughs> She was very nice. She's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> <No>? <laughs> yeah. At that time, uh, she was unable to sleep for almost uh, two weeks, uh, past two weeks. At the hospital, uh, it was a night shift, of course. <laughs> she explained uh, to us that she didn't want to lose. Uh, she didn't want to sleep because she didn't want to lose her ideas, very big ideas about the festival. Uh, in England, which she planned to organize. She also spoke about love. She spoke about love very, very much, <laughs> which she, need, she needed to show people all around the world. And uh, uh, also she uh, wanted to appease the Hungarian prime minister with George Soros to found this festival in England, which <laughs> would be a musical <laughs> festival. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> in the last few weeks, she, in reality, she lost uh, two jobs. She argued with colleagues, with bosses, and because she felt that they didn't treat her well and uh, didn't appreciate her abilities. Uh, she started to walk from bar to bar uh, in, in, at the night and speak about her plan. Uh, she also told me that uh, she know famous musicians and owners of um, bars and pubs and Budapest and money is not a problem for her. Why I cannot understand this, so it was a very funny <laughs> conversation. Uh, but in rea reality, her mother <coughs> said that uh, she did only part-time jobs, she was dropped out from university show, so her life was very, very chaotic. Uh, so she was full of ideas and big dreams, which were very far from reality. Uh, at the time of this examination, we could observe symptoms of psychosis. Uh, there were megalomany, grandiose and paranoid delusions, uh, very fast thinking, incoherency, rapid and disorganized speech, uh, and agitated behavior. She was also very suspicious with us and mainly with her mother. And she had lack of illness awareness and a very lack of self insight. So we had to place her in the beginning to a close ward, of course. Um, she did not have any psychiatric history, uh, but as she told me later, she has always struggled with the chronic feelings of emptiness and uh, suffered from extreme emotional swings. And she also spoke about her recurring suicidal thoughts. 
she never tried it, but uh, there were always thoughts of uh, um, not, life is not worth anything. In the past um, one, one and a half years, she tried uh, several drugs as well to ease, uh, these are her words, to ease the pain which she felt. Uh, especially she tried the so-called party drugs and cannabis. Her urine test, uh, which we regularly have, uh, then uh, when we have the suspicion of drug abuse, uh, had came back positive to amphetamine and cannabis as well. Uh, my diagnosis, our diagnosis was a uh, brief uh, uh, psychotic disorders according to DSM-5 and uh, we used SGA's uh, second generation antipsychotic uh, medication uh, at the beginning the combination of risperidone and olanzapine and uh, uh, it was needed to to use some tranquilizer as, at the beginning her symptoms were very very intense uh, but alternated in a short time which is very characteristic. I think you may know it's characteristic for substance-induced uh, psychosis. So, uh, based on these informations known, about, known to us, uh, we were very confident to, to say that Kate has suffered from borderline personality disorders, and chronic feelings of emptiness, self-harm, uh, no stable relationship bet uh, between um, with friends and in family, yeah, and uh, we also know that it's a fact that um, the people with borderline personality disorder have greater vulnerability, vulnerability to psychosis, especially a paranoid form of psychosis. So in Kate's case, I think the regular abuse of drugs evoked this uh, psychotic state and evoked this vulnerability. Uh, after um, we, we treated her, um, yeah, six, seven weeks <laughs> uh, in our uh, department of psychiatry, uh, her behavior came totally conventional at the end. Her former delusions are completely, but really completely disappears. She always uh, loved on herself, uh, on her uh, former ideas. And uh, she participated in several group therapies as well. Uh, and we also started a supportive form of psychotherapy uh, to enhance her self-efficacy and awareness. Uh, at the time of her dismissal, he was only taking uh, 10 milligrams of olanzapine, which is not a very big dosage, uh, and became more and more conscious of her problems. She realized that abstinence is, evident, uh, is essential for her. I don't know how long will it <laughs> last, but for now it's the, it's the thing. And uh, we met sometimes after his, uh, her uh, dismissal. And uh, at the last time, uh, she agreed finally to go <coughs> to a psychotherapy department. So she's here now, and I hope it's it's uh, it's end well. <laughs> so that's it. And thank you for your attention. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If, you, if you have any questions or comments, maybe. Uh, yeah, I'd rather choose not a schizophrenia patient because maybe because for me it's more um, I get used to it. So <laughs> so uh, patients with schizophrenia and uh, and substance use disorders are uh, um, very common for now. Yeah, uh, I think in the past uh, half year. Most of the clients we diagnosed uh, with schizophrenia are used uh, something, mainly cannabis or uh, <laughs> sometimes amphetamine or designer drugs. Any questions? 
Maybe, yes. maybe again, uh, yeah. for our <laughs> topic, you know, the new psychoactive substances because there's yeah. a strong in impact with the comorbidity yeah. dual diagnosis. Do you see, because this would maybe be mostly under the item designer drugs you have here, or I mean, do you see a, a shift also in the drug scene from the drug scene to the dark net or internet and uh, more an impact also on the comorbidity issues and uh, the effect on the treatment? Does this have any effect on the treatment, the, the kind of substances people yes. use? Yes. Uh... When, uh, when we think that uh, there is a designer drug used um, um, uh, behind a, psych a psychotic state, uh, we, sh um, we try to avoid, first, for instance, haloperidol. Because, uh, so there are some guidelines, there are some uh, case reports about which uh, medication is good for these uh, these intoxicated uh, people, uh, for example, halperidol is not good at all. Uh, but uh, in regular practice, I don't know in your country which is the, the first uh, what we choose, but we choose haloperidol and clonazepam. <laughs> and uh, for example, for these people, uh, designer drug users, they, they have a, uh, haloperidol have a paradox. Mm, so yeah, we try to we try to go on with the flow and mm -hmm. try to exp uh, have uh, learn from experiences. But uh, I think uh, the form of cycles is the symptoms of cycles are different. They are more agitated, mm -hmm. uh, very much more, much more aggression, much more aggression. And is there any of the new substances with which you have a very high prevalence? Uh, is there any special substance you, mm. you, you find out that's high prevalence now in the scene or um, is uh, actually very common? Yeah, I think the most common um, is methadron yeah. mm -hmm. in, in my practice, but I don't know if you know anything else. And, uh, and also synthetic uh, cannabinoids, it's called bio-wheat <laughs> in yes, Hungarian. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is, and uh, mm -hmm. the users um, uh, commonly don't really know what they mm -hmm. use. Oh, something, it's weed. Mm -hmm. Is it real weed? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but it's bio, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> it do no harm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, bioweed and methadone, these are, but I think there is many of them, but there are many of them, but we don't have a clue.